Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And also with you. <laughs> yeah, so you can see the picture. Oh, cool. That makes sense. Well, good morning. The time is now 9.40 and a quorum of the board is present. The State Board of Education meeting of June 14th, 2011 is hereby called to order. First item is approval of the agenda and order of priority. I have a motion, please. Uh, I'd like to make an amendment. I'd like to remove Q from the consent agenda. If possible, just for personal comments, I, I support the uh, agenda item that's presented. Great. Removing Q, is that consent? And then uh, for some personal comments. Any other changes to the agenda? Second, and item D is being removed, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Which item? I'm sorry. He. He is a dog. Yes. Yeah. That'll okay. be postponed to. Any other comments or changes? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same. Thank you. Marilyn Mertz. Good morning. Welcome to the State Board of Education meeting of June 14th, 2011. Thank you for the many guests that we have attending here and, and representatives from various associations and the press. I'd like to introduce the State Board of Education to you. Starting with my left is Mike Flanagan. He's the Superintendent of Public Instruction and serves as the Chairman of the State Board of Education. To his left is John Austin. John's from Ann Arbor and he's the President of the Board of Education. Cassandra Albrich is the Vice President of the Board. She's from Rochester Hills. Nancy Danhoff is next. She's from East Lansing. She's the Secretary of the Board and she is in the parking lot looking for a parking space. Uh -huh. <laughs> Kathleen Strauss is next. She's from Detroit. The current Teacher of the Year is Matinga Ragatz. Matinga lives in DeWitt, Michigan and she teaches World Studies in Grand Lodge Public Schools. And as we go across the table, Eileen Weiser is from Ann Arbor and then Dan Varner from Detroit. Richard Ziley is the board's NASB delegate. He's also from Detroit. Marianne McGuire is the treasurer. She's from Detroit. Thank you. Thank you, Mertz. And we see our former state board member, Carolyn Curtin, couldn't resist coming back for a, a, another stint. Good to see you, Carolyn. And thanks for everyone who joins us regularly. I know it's, uh, it's very appreciated that you're engaged in our work. I just thought we would, today's kind of our, maybe our favorite meeting of the year because of uh, the teachers that are in the room and the people that we honor here. And it's a transition time from Matinga to Paul, you'll see in a, in a, in a few minutes. But I thought I would just show you a photo. In this room, um, I have what's called like a student advisory cabinet. And it's interesting that I would show you this, that these folks are from other parts of the state and they couldn't quite make it here, these young people. And the one lives like 11 yards from Wisconsin. <laughs> and I, literally, and I think it was interesting to see the kids, because this is, I want to say that Jill and Karen did a great job of, of trying to get a, a diverse group of young people. And uh, the immediate team that I work with was with me for the uh, three or four hours we were with these young folks, and we're going to continue that. It was very helpful to us. We're going to have a summary uh, for the board um, uh, at a later date. I, but it just gets us thinking about the fact that sometimes in the work that we do here, the items are always about young people and the students, but if you don't see them regularly, it's hard to kind of translate our work to actually their achievement and their futures. So it was really helpful. We just thought we'd start with that particular. They talked about flipped classrooms, by the way, which is something I learned more about and Bruce is going to present at a future meeting, a little more conversation about the way they would like to see technology used in the classroom basically that they'd look at podcasts the night before and then engage in a different way during the day. We'll take that off the screen because we're going to first of all move to the, um, these are resolutions only and it's, it's in order to lay the groundwork for us to do the rest yeah. of the meeting which is the, the appropriate ceremonial part on related to Teacher of the Year. So we have two resolutions that need to be approved before we move to those presentations. They're honoring the 2010-2011 Michigan Teacher of the Year, Matinga Ragatz, and it's honoring also the 2011-12 Teacher of the Year, who will be introduced in a few moments. 
Uh, I'd entertain a motion to approve these resolutions. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> and supported by Cassandra. I sure. Think. So moved by Nancy, <laughs> supported by Cassandra. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same. Thank you. And those will be presented in a few moments. The first thing we're going to do, and this is a, a tradition that I think has really been interesting to watch, and that is for the current teacher of the year um, at, in this case, her final meeting to make a presentation and a few remarks on the valuable input that she's provided at the board table and, and, and the way that she's engaged in her work in the last year around the state. Um, this will be Matinga's final uh, meeting as Michigan Teacher of the Year, but hope she joins us in the future when she has that opportunity. And, and then when she completes her remarks, uh, John and I and others, other board members, will make some remarks and uh, will present the resolution. So at this point, uh, Matinga, thank you so much for your generosity this year and your good thinking. Thank you very much, um, and thank you, everybody. I'd like to, first of all, start with a huge hug um, for everyone who has um, guided me through this process. I would like to um, thank the board for a year of vision and learning and I'm going to share with you today the things that I've learned at your hands and um, selection committee I know some of you are here um, I would like to uh, really thank you for allowing me this opportunity Paul and I were talking um, is it last night? I don't know what I know. <laughs> and we were talking about the unique opportunity that we've both been given. And so for me, being in this room month after month uh, made me realize one thing. You know, I've been to staff meetings, I've been to workshops, conferences, and all of that, but I've um, rarely met a group of people who get together regularly and are so committed to the welfare of the child. Um, you're inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> you're inspiring, and I think that if every Michigan teacher who is demoralized today had a chance to sit where I sit today, would understand that they have a huge team behind them, and they're not, that they're not alone. So I hope that um, you guys um, have a way of evangelizing what you do here. <laughs> because it's, um, it, it, it's, it's phenomenal, it's extraordinary, and more so than any hospital, more so than NASA and any technology crazy uh, business, you guys are the future of Michigan, because without you, the children won't learn to take our place. And so I wanted to thank you, and I wanted to give you, again, a huge hug and I thank you for what I've learned today. So I'm going to quickly show you, because I knew that I was going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> so, I want, so I put it on video. But before I start, I want, I'm, I'm really glad that Mike um, talked about how the kids were talking it to their counterparts somewhere else in the state. Because um, maybe about three or four weeks ago, I um, went to my family. This is the one that lives abroad. And through Skype, we talk about, well, so what did you, I said, well, I learned so much this year. And so they're like, well, what did you learn this year? And my, um, my brother who lives in Spain said, well, you know what? After we've talked about what you've learned, let's put together something that will show what you've learned. So I said, well, let's, let's think of what we can do. So I went to my students and I asked them for some ideas. What would you do? And they came out basically with the concept. Now, they didn't help me with the concept because they were more worried about getting to summer vacation <laughs> than to helping the teacher with that project. Are you serious? <laughs> and so, <laughs> so, so I wanted to show you the possibilities, and I wanted to leave this. I, I wanted to leave with this because, um, even though the content is not, it's it's personal. It's the way that the kids are learning today, where they can reach across an ocean, reach across the world, and instantly be able to create, um, and instantly be able to express themselves. So now. My family lives in, we all live in three different continents. My parents live in Africa, my brother lives in, um, my parents and my sister live in Africa, my brother lives in Spain, I live here. And uh, the last time I saw my brother was five years ago. And really as adults we've never lived 
in the same continent or living together. So he doesn't know what I do. Like he's never seen me professionally. I've never really seen him professionally. Like I don't go to his job and see what he does. Um, so this is really interesting because without ever seeing what we do, he was able to help me put together something that expresses what I do. And um, we can't discount this way of learning any longer. And I hope that as we create the magic that happens in this room, um, we go on to include things like this as part of the norm and not the exception. Um, okay. Let me just go ahead and play it, hopefully. Oh, one second. Matinga means golden link in my father's Induway tribal language. Traditionally, the Induway people name their children after they're born so that they can witness the spirit of the child and give it a name. So I became Golden Link because my birth linked two tribes, the Induway and the Bubi, my mother's people. I'm told that my spirit came to learn to link people and to learn to understand. I had a multicultural elementary education. My parents lived in Africa at the time and they were diplomats. And so we had to um, travel a lot. So we went, uh, we lived in um, Equatorial Guinea, which is in West Africa, Liberia, Nigeria, Kenya, Morocco. I'm sure I'm missing something there. But um, eventually Spain gave us a political asylum, and so we went to live in Spain. That's where I got most of my middle school education. I always wanted to be a teacher, um, and it's not something I actually verbalize. I just always picture myself as a teacher, even though I denied it as a teenager. I said, "Mom's a teacher." I didn't want to be like my mom, but I am glad now because she's my role model. My story is that of Dutch teachers. You know, it all begins with me to tell them who I know, take them where I've been, show them what I've seen, and to share with them what I've experienced. I really struggled as a student. It was very difficult for me to stay within the line. I had a bad habit of asking too many questions and questioning the process because I really needed to see things from many different angles. So I needed to touch things, experience things beyond the two-dimensional pages of a book or a notebook. My, my learning style clashed with the status quo. In fact, I spent much of my primary school years on the business end of a ruler, the wheel by an energetic nun. And later on in high school, I hid behind the class clown persona because that was a, a, a viable option at the time. Sure. On paper, this made me a terrible student, but I knew that I was a great learner. I loved to learn. Learning through discovery was like a hobby, and challenges were like a drug. It has always been a marvel to me to look at something and ask myself, well, what else can I, this thing do? With? What else can I do with this? This year I entered the magical world of the Department of Education and the State Board of Education meetings where I found my voice as a teacher and I really understood the importance of sharing our story with decision makers. I got a chance to sharpen my teaching techniques and models that I've been testing out in my classroom. For example, you know, working on local blended instructional models and speaking about hybrid learning nationally and international, internationally to thousands of people, 
you know, I've been able to bounce ideas off of interested educators, and now my instructional concept design skills are a lot sharper, and I've become a lot more perceptive to trend, and a lot more receptive of all the incoming education technology. I've had the most profound professional development opportunities, and now I really understand that very effective professional development is led by really good practicing teachers, and that it makes a big difference when all involved are willing participants. I met the most intensely inspiring group of educators this year who taught me to believe in myself and I believe in what I do and keep speaking even when no one seems to be listening and to keep on keeping on because that is the key to success. I learned that when the community and the politicals misunderstand what educators do, it's up to me, nay, it's up to teachers to get out in the community and show them what we do. So in the 21st century and with the help of the technology and the aid of the internet, educators have a much wider circle of influence. I traveled to East Asia this year where I met with education officials, school administrators, and teachers interested in understanding the nature of hybrid learning. I have since done webinars with educators in China, South Korea, and many other parts of the world. I could go on endlessly about the people that I've met and the places that I've been and the opportunities that I've had this year, but I believe the most important lesson that I've learned is that I've learned is to turn my classroom into fertile soil for young talent by promoting student advocacy and talent development and by creating relationships between my students and the successful businesses and organizations in the community. My work in my classroom is a love letter to the profession of teaching. You know, with all the things that are good about it and the things that are not so good, I've just tried my best to capture the magic and the wonder that goes on in my classroom and classrooms all over Michigan and hope that people can respond to that. You know, teaching is an extraordinary concept. I love being an educator because I get to have a love affair with learning. I like to see Tota marina fashulale, tunia ni maneno. Tota marina fashulale, tota mama, siku ina kuya, muzika weyo. Thing, I, you know, you're going to be so missed. I think in a year of such uh, mm -hmm. tremendous reform, I think you are a regular reminder for me anyway that I also get from my daughter, the high school teacher, that reform doesn't mean that people in the system aren't working hard and doing a tremendous job with our kids. It's a system issue, and I appreciate very much that voice that you would bring regularly. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I know some other board members have things to say to you. Yeah, well watching your video. I'd love to be Teacher of the Year. Looks like you get to go to cool places. Yeah. Too. We get to go to Mount Pleasant. <laughs> sure. and, 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 um, no, you, we've ta we talk a lot about doing more to um, celebrate teachers, appreciate your gifts and your contribution, um, listen to teachers. You, know, you have um, been able to help us as a board and by extension the whole state and educators learn more, much more about how you um, excite learning, uh, show us new exciting tricks, they're not tricks, they're meaningful ways to engage your students and uh, really made an impact 
um, in showing us all and helping us all see how to animate uh, powerful teaching. And we thank you and thank you for your presence here and contributions and hope this is just the beginning of you flying higher and touching more. Uh, and by extension, um, touching many more who will in turn uh, share the gifts and the insight and the passion that is so clear with you. So thank you so much. John, I know you have a resolution too yeah, that you're going to. Are we going to present this? We're going we're to get a, a picture of the entire board with Matenga, but great. The, Marty, come up here or go down that way? We get the whole board here? down this end? Okay. Down here? Down here? Okay. Oh, we want to have that. Part of your tenure was Thank with Matenga. Would you like to Thank join you. us? We have one more shot with Caroline as part of her family. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially since you were highlighted in the uh, oh, yeah. presentation there. Yeah. the hook. We've got a big meeting yet today, so we need your help. I was going to go to eat. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful recap, though, and I really appreciate the presentation you. that you made. Well, and now what we do is we, even though this is your final meeting, this is also our time to welcome the new teacher of the year, and I'd like Barb Fardell to join at the table. On May 26th, uh, Kathy, Marianne, Richard, and I, we were, we were fortunate enough to kind of surprise the new teacher of the year. And uh, Paul, by the way, is the first CTE teacher to become teacher of the year. And uh, you should have seen the reaction from uh, his fellow teachers, from the students and others, because I think it's been one of the areas in our, in our system that's been uh, underappreciated. There are so many kids who learn in such a tremendous way because of uh, the nature of the way CTE. I know that Patty, where are you? Patty, who's our director of career tech here, is just delighted. But a teacher is a teacher, and ultimately one of the things that Paul brings you, you well, we're going to see more of that in a moment. So, Barb, why don't I um, ask you to make some opening comments? I know there's some things that you're going to kick off, and then, and then we'll get to Paul. Thank you. You always steal my thunder. You talk about the things I was going to say. <laughs> okay. We're so excited Sorry. that, that <laughs> we're really excited about Paul being a CT um, instructor. But first of all, I want to say this is one of the most rewarding assignments I've ever received here at the Department of Ed, uh, being able to work with these great teachers. So um, whoever was responsible for that, thank you. Um, I do have some pretty big shoes to follow. Jean Shane is here today to give me some moral support. She has just done a fabulous job over the past years uh, with all of the recognition programs here at the department. So 
Jean, thank you so much for all that. Great work. And I have to say, I sat last night and watched all the videos of the past uh, Teacher of the Year, so I'm, I'm glad we have these videos so I could follow her footsteps correctly. We had over 350 applications this year submitted for Michigan Teacher of the Year. That is a lot, and I have a feeling if more people knew how to submit applications, we would have even more. So that will be one of the things I work on this year. Um, we had 16 finalists from seven regions, and those finalists were reviewed by a team representing higher ed, special ed, teacher prep, alternative ed, uh, curriculum, and a former Michigan Teacher of the Year. So I think we had a very well-rounded team reviewing the, the final um, applications, and I especially want to thank Dr. Uh, Ziley for being on the interview panel, did a wonderful job, and for being at the presentation at um, Oakland uh, campus, Southeast. And along with Dr. Ziley was Mrs. Strauss, there you are, <laughs> and uh, Mrs. McGuire. So thank you both for, for being there. It was, it was a lot of fun. And I think now uh, a video will show, shows it better than I can explain it. So if we could show the video. I think you'll see it was well worth the 40 years it took to get a CTE teacher chosen as Michigan Teacher of the Year. Well, we want to introduce you to a man who's one in a hundred thousand. Yeah, Paul Gilbensky teaches at Oakland School's Technical Campus Southeast. And today he was named the State Teacher of the Year. State Superintendent Mike Flanagan made the surprise presentation. Gilbensky was quick to thank his co-workers, mentors, and family, but he saved the best for last. I also want to say my last thanks um, for my first teachers, um, my parents, Richard and Suzanne, um, who are here today. So thank you. Thank you for uh, helping raise a teacher. And I hope that some of these students that we have here become teachers. Uh, told me in high Honey, school. this is the first time a career and technical educator has been named Teacher of the Year. That is very home. special. Short, but to the point, you can see the excitement there. Um, I, I wish all of you could have been at that presentation. It was just fantastic. And Paul Elbeski, come on up to the table. Our uh, 2011, 2012. Before we let Paul say his first words at the board table, I just want to let you know that with him today, are his wife uh, Susan, it's his wife Susan, his children Michael and Anna, uh, <laughs> Superintendent of Oakland ISD, uh, Dr. Vicki Markovich, the Dean of the Oakland Technical Campus Southeast, Alan Beckner, and I have to say, uh, I think Mr. Beckner should be a choreographer uh, in his retirement because, boy, he had that presentation <laughs> down just perfectly at the <laughs> center. People moved, people sat, it was, it was great. Um, Paul's mother and father, Richard and Suzanne Galbanski and his brother David, um, and his mother and father-in-law, Robert and Pat Haydick, did I say that correctly? And his good friend, Jim Holcomb, who is the Senior Vice President for Business and Adv Advocacy at the Michigan Chamber of Commerce. So thank you all for being here today. Yeah. Well, well, first of all, I'd like to thank the State Board of Education, State Superintendent, uh, Mr. Mike Flanagan, and the Selection Committee for this wonderful opportunity is being selected the 2011 and 2012 Michigan Teacher of the Year. As uh, I'm getting to know uh, Matinga and you obviously see the wonderful work there as you. I have some uh, big shoes to follow in and footsteps to follow as well as, as all of the teachers of the year. Oh, I don't know I could do the year. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll try. <laughs> and, and as you all are, are, are know, and that any achievement or honor that we receive, it's certainly not earned individually. There's been many, many people who have played significant roles in my life along the way that certainly have contributed to and share in this wonderful honor to represent all of the outstanding educators across our great state of Michigan. Uh, two fellow educators that definitely share in this award uh, are my BMMT colleagues uh, and my teaching partners. Uh, Mr. Mike Waters and Mr. Mike Mayville. As I'm here today, they are back at the home front holding down the fort uh, with our students at the uh, technical campus. It is all certainly an honor today to share also with uh, Ms. Melody Perrin and Mr. Uh, Gerald Zarnecki, two outstanding educators and finalists for the Michigan Teacher of the Year Award as well. I look forward to meeting them a little bit later. And, uh, 
Matinga has been unbelievable in terms of helping me, guiding me, letting me know all the wonderful opportunities that I'm going to be afforded by being the Michigan Teacher of the Year, and it's a wonderful learning opportunity. We all know education is a lifelong learning process, and uh, what she has been is just a true inspiration for all educators for the work that she's done with her students in her classroom and, of course, the global educational community. I, I too also would like to recognize um, Oakland School Superintendent Dr. Vicki Markovich and my dean, Mr. Alan Beckner, for their support. Uh, without their support, we couldn't provide the wonderful opportunities that we do for our students day in and day out in our classroom. We all have special people uh, in our life, and I just want to let you know, I couldn't be here today standing here in front of you, being a part of this wonderful event that we are celebrating, if it weren't for the unconditional love and support from my wife, Susan. She truly is an amazing person. Susan, I thank you for all that you do. I thank you for the person that you are. Because without, here, without her, there wouldn't be anything here today for me. I also want to recognize my two children, Michael and Anna. Boy, I just can only imagine what's going through their mind to be 8 and 10 years old, to be able to be involved in these types of opportunities, and they too share in this award. I want to recognize my brother, who um, certainly has been uh, my best friend, and my good friend, Jim Holcomb, for taking the time being here today. I'm very fortunate to have my parents, Richard and Suzanne, present this morning, along with my mother and father-in-law, Robert and Patricia Hayduck. I truly am blessed and I really recognize what a wonderful uh, supportive family that I have. I'm really extremely humbled to receive this honor. I'm looking forward to spreading the word, if you will, about the outstanding opportunities that career and technical education provide for our students, my students in the state of Michigan, but also across the United States. You know, we all are experiencing very uh, interesting times in education, and I hope that this award will allow, allow uh, CTE to have a voice and have that voice be heard. And in some small way, I hope that I'm able to contribute to the continued success of our future college graduates and our future workforce during the 2011-2012 school year. Thank you. forward to spending this next year. Likewise. Um, and I'd also now like to take the opportunity to introduce Pam Harlan of Mimic Insurance. Pam, if you could stand for a moment. Uh, Mimic Insurance, you know, plays a huge role in allowing us to provide um, some of the, the, the nice things that we can for our Michigan Teacher of the Year, namely a car for them to drive this year, which I'm sure will help in your transportation back and forth. Um, and a thousand dollar check to Oakland um, Technical Campus Southeast. Mm -hmm. And also they will be pre presenting a check to each of the finalist schools in the fall. So thank you, Pam and Mimic, for all that you do for this program. Really appreciate it. Um, now, I hope I can choreograph this correctly. <laughs> if um, Superintendent Flanagan and Mr. Austin would like to come down to this end of the table to present the resolution to Paul and a couple other um, things that we have. Resolution as we've approved. Um, I think we're all, you 
must be good if you've survived Dr. Ziley's interrogation <laughs> <laughs> program. <laughs> we know you're terrific, but um, thank you and, and your whole team and family for being here. And we, we've just been out doing some forums, and clearly one issue that we uh, we welcome your help and we're excited about for technical educators, how do we help create technical education to flourish and lead a vehicle for the kind of exciting uh, coming alive of learning uh, that we're trying to promote uh, and you can help us Jim cracks here or Yes, uh, on the base it says here, you never stand so tall as when you reach out to help a child. to introduce this. Okay, sorry. Our two state finalists, so so we're not blocking everybody. If everyone here can stand to the side. Um, we have with us today, and I want to make sure I have their guest names correctly. Um, Mrs. Melody Perrin, and she is a special ed teacher. There she is. Come on, up, Melody. She's a special ed teacher from Keith Bovention School in Macomb at Macomb ISD. For, and I think she started teaching when she was 12 because she's been a teacher for 35 years? 36 years? I, I'm sure she started when she was 12. Um, and with her today is her husband, um, Gerald, and her principal, Denise Jackson. And we have Mr. Gerald Zarnecki. He is a math and physics teacher and we really enjoyed listening to all the technology he uses in the classroom with his teaching <laughs> from Kellogg'sville uh, Public Schools and with him is his got it out of line here is his principal or no excuse me superintendent Greg Warson and his wife Bridget thank you for being here today. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, but we wanted to present this to you. This, the pin, actually, for those of you who can't see it, is the same as the statue that was given to uh, the Michigan Teacher of the Year. And this is a, a memento for you um, to commemorate the fact that you were a finalist. And it's a huge, huge uh, responsibility and, and opportunity. And we're very proud that you're coming to this time. So, this is for you. This is right. This is for the camp. First of all, personal privilege. Vicky and I were new superintendents together over 20 years ago. We were in the Superintendent's Academy, superintendent outside of Chicago at the time. And we uh, a lot of respect. She does a great job. And maybe if the dean would join us also, this is really just a commemorate Paul's honor on the campus itself. Um, we're so proud to have him. family with the participant. That would be good. That would great be good. idea. And then we'll yeah. get official yeah. Why don't we do that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, family members? Paul, why don't we have your Paul family first. come up? Sure. Sure. Mike and Anna. I'm Mike and my wife's Anna, so this is kind of a <laughs> ring that I hear quite often. Where would you like this? Uh, Paul, this is for you. Yeah. 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 Y
Like so right in front of that yeah. line. I mean, you stand in front of it. <laughs> Now, I need to let you know that our guests, you do need to stay till 5 o'clock tonight. You are not allowed to be here. Uh, <coughs> now, on a serious note, we would, we would certainly understand if, if you took this opportunity to, to leave. We'd also encourage you to stay if you're, welcome, you're certainly welcome to, but um, feel comfortable to do what's, huh? what works for you. So we'll take maybe a one-minute break here. And <laughs> Over. That happened to me one in a snowstorm, okay. unfortunately. Well, I just, it was just like, of course, what more could happen today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, at least you're here now. Yeah. You can decompress I, it. Yeah. I, oh, and I had three people that didn't show up for training by, by the time I left, and I'm just hoping to God they got there, they didn't get lost, they're out there wandering yeah. around, and they couldn't get a hold of me until, I mean, mm. I should have checked. I picked this up, I literally ran in and got this. Thank you, Barb. I'm not sure where you are, but thanks, Barb, for for all your work on this. Thank you, Barb. She's out with her box of cleaners. She's out, yeah. <laughs> Jean tradition carries on. Yeah. Well, great. Now we're um, at the committee of the whole meeting, and we've uh, removed item D, as you know. That'll be postponed till another meeting. We have a full, a full meeting today, so we made a decision to do that. <coughs> 